Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Black Widow released a final trailer that shows everyone doing their best Russian accents and Taskmaster doing his best Black Panther impression. Wakanda forever. That is my line. I don't care. You son of a bitch. While this Taskmaster mystery is definitely keeping us scratching our heads, this trailer actually conceals a way bigger reveal about who I think is the true villain of this film and how it'll connect to future properties on the MCU calendar. Let's break this all down frame by frame and spoiler warning in case you like to complain. Let's get started. I tell people my sister moved out west. You're a science teacher. You're thinking about moving, but you're gonna wait until the interest rates go down. That's not my story. <laughs> okay, the trailer opens on this landscape of a shimmering coastline. Now, every trailer so far has opened on a different location. First it was Budapest, then it was Tel Aviv, and now I'm thinking Norway. You can see a car approaching in the far right, and then Natasha moves through this trailer home and she passes this towel. Now I spent way too much time figuring out what this is. It's actually a vintage Scandinavian tea towel, a recipe for happiness. Four cups of love, two cups of loyalty, three cups of forgiveness, one cup of friendship, two spoons of hope, two spoons of tenderness, four quarts of faith, one barrel of hot <laughs> laughter. Take love loyalty mixed thoroughly with faith, blend it with tenderness, kindness, and understanding, add friendship and hope, and sprinkle abundantly with laughter. Bake it with sunshine, serve daily with generous help. Yeah, how much kindness and understanding. They weren't the ingredients, towel. Anyway, it's Scandinavian, so yeah, Norway. Anyway, I'm just curious as to why this is the first we're seeing of this location in all of the promo footage. Could it be a post credit scene hinting at an even secreter location? The word secreter looks like secreter, and I hate saying it. Yelena says that she tells people Natasha is a science teacher married to a guy who renovates houses. Now, Natasha ain't married to Hulk, but the guy can definitely flip a house. Now, to be clear, by sister, Yelena considers Natasha a surrogate sister. Same for when Alexei later tells Natasha, listen to your mother. It's a surrogate family made up of these Russian soldiers. But it is interesting that in Endgame, Natasha would tell Cap before her Avengers family she had nothing, when she's got a family here, and why in that deleted scene for Captain America's Civil War, she mentioned visiting her parents' graves. But I got a big juicy theory for these inconsistencies that I'll get to later, but moving on. Before I was an Avenger, I made mistakes. And a lot of enemies. Natasha's car gets lit up on a bridge. If you slow it down, you can see that it's a red glowing beam or projectile that causes this explosion. Perhaps one of those explosive tipped arrows that we see Taskmaster using later in the trailer. And as Natasha rolls, you can see some canister tumbling around in the back seat. Now in the other promo footage, Natasha can be seen clutching these red vials that I've speculated look a lot like pin particle vials. They really look like them on that Funko Pop figurine. And perhaps she keeps those vials in this canister. And that's what Taskmaster is after. Set photos have shown Natasha wading through water holding a similar object. Perhaps she gets away from Taskmaster by jumping off this bridge and wading to safety. Now, pin particles would probably mean time meddling. And I got a theory for that, but these vials could be something else. Perhaps the means by which the other Black Widow agents get mind controlled. So by controlling these red things, they can keep this mind controlled assassins from doing really bad things. Taskmaster pulls a cap or a falcon and Discus tosses a shield at Natasha. Now, if you were to enhance the other promo footage of Taskmaster swinging on that bridge, you can make out what looks like an actual Spider-Man piece of webbing. This guy has got it all. We see more of his process in the next clip. His call signs Taskmaster. He controls the Red Room. They're manipulated, fully conscious, but no choices. So apparently Taskmaster's power comes from the same place my power does. Obsessive MCU rewatches. Here he's watching footage of Natasha from Iron Man 2. It's actually the same security footage that Whiplash was watching during that scene. And if you think about it, Cap's elevator shield move was also on security camera footage that Sitwell watched. And Spider-Man's moves were all on YouTube. So everything Taskmaster knows, he got from a past MCU moment that was recorded. A close-up of his mask shows a circular piece that could be a camera lens. Perhaps this is how he records everything he sees. And in that eyepiece, you can see projections of what appear to amount to an internal heads-up display, kind of like what Iron Man has in his helmet. So maybe Taskmaster's famous mirrored combat ability is less photographic reflexes than like a supercomputer analyzing combat tactics. Now Taskmaster's identity remains concealed. So let's break down all the suspects we've mentioned from most likely to most fun. The likely direction is the comics identity of Tony Masters, perhaps a double identity of O.T. Fag Benley's character, Mason, 
existence. No promo footage has shown the actor whatsoever. Taskmaster appears to be taller than other characters, as is Feg Benley. And the actor recently posted on Instagram with the caption hashtag TM. So there you go. But now that we're learning the Red Room Black Widow agents are being mind controlled, it's also possible Taskmaster could be a shared identity. Scream style! And characters like Melina or Yelena could at times be under that hood and mask. Like Taskmaster, Melina and Yelena share mirrored fight moves to Natasha. Other options that have been brought up are Hawkeye Clint Barton, who does have a past in Budapest and could be being pressured by people like Ross, say by kidnapping his family. Or Bucky, who, yeah, has a past as a mind controlled terrorist and assassin. I have also speculated that Zemo could be under that mask as a close Avengers observer who could also be doing Ross's bidding since they have mutual enemies. Whoever Taskmaster is, I have a feeling that he is controlling the Red Room assets on behalf of Ross. Now, if we were to interpret those red vials as pin particles, Taskmaster could be Natasha herself from a different time. If you think about it, when she fell off that cliff in Vormir, she did have one remaining pin particle. There was a flash of light. She could have zipped back through time, gotten a bunch of other pin particles, and then gone on one last time mission to right all of her past wrongs before coming back and closing the loop to die. Fun, but yeah, probably OT equals TM. Now notice here that Yelena has a nasty cut on her arm when in the previous shot, it was bandaged. I'm guessing that this is after their knife fight. Maybe now Natasha's stitching her up over beers in a restaurant where people are eating. Um, excuse me, can you do that in a bathroom? Oh, wow, we left our recipe for happiness privacy towel at home, okay? Deal with it. Natasha says she regrets not going back for Yelena, but then there's this overhead shot, as if it's a flashback. But it ain't a flashback. That white jumpsuit Yelena wears probably sets this after other events in the movie. And this medical procedure seems like the biggest reveal of the trailer. Look, folks, I'm spending all this time in the blue dungeon breaking stuff down because I'm not the biggest fan of surprises. Surprises scare me. Surprises like the hidden fees that just pop up on my bank statement. <gasps> True jump scare. Well, banking fees are a thing of the past. We have Current, and thanks to Current for sponsoring this video. So Current is a mobile bank account that comes with a Visa debit card that has no minimum balance, no overdrafts, no hidden fees. The black premium card gets you paid up to two days faster when you move your direct deposit to Current. So if you normally get paid on Fridays, that means with Current, your paycheck hits Wednesdays. Current gives you a bank account and a real debit card without all the fees and requirements of old banks and sketchy prepaid cards. You can connect your current card to Cash App or Venmo, get cash back at the register, and deposit checks into your account using your camera. The premium account has perks like instantly refunding the holds that gas stations put on your card at the pump. The app notifies you when you spend, automatically helps you put away money with savings pods, and has 24-7 support through live chat. Plus, Current even has bank accounts for teens if you're under 18. Current works with Apple Pay and Google Pay on your phone and is available in the US it only takes two minutes to sign up and your current card will be shipped to you for free. Download Current now at the link in the description below. Okay, I need to talk about two things from this shot of Yelena. The equipment to her side appears to be marked with the acronym AIM. AOL Instant, I'm just kidding, AIM, Advanced Idea Mechanics. It's the Marvel Scientific Research Agency that was last mentioned in Iron Man 3, the organization founded by Aldrich Killian. Remember, it was up to shadowy stuff like the Extremist Program. So what are they doing with Yelena here? Well, look at her face. There is a line drawn around her hairline. Guys, I brought this up jokingly before, but is Yelena seriously getting her face surgically swapped? This wouldn't be the craziest thing to happen because in the 2001 breakdown storyline, Natasha definitely swaps faces with Yelena in order to get closer to Yelena's handler, General Stelyanko, to prevent a nuclear disaster and to show Yelena how much Stelyanko hates her in order to turn her against him. Now here, Yelena is strapped down, forced into this operation. So what's going on? Well, maybe after Natasha disappears, goes off the grid, Ross could take Yelena and use medical technology from AIM to reconstruct Yelena's face to look like Natasha's. Why? Because it's cool. Also, to get an asset close to the fugitives he's after, Cap and Bucky. Ross's broader goal could be to have a Natasha Romanov under his control and to use the same Taskmaster brainwashing technology to assemble his own Avengers team that he calls the Thunderbolts Initiative. This face swap could explain Natasha's mysterious hair color change to blonde when we catch back up with her in Infinity War and why Natasha is wearing the same exact vest that Yelena wears in this movie. It could be why Natasha claims to have never had a true family in Endgame and why she claims to have not known her father's name. Folks, we could 
could really be looking at a reality where the Natasha in Infinity War and Endgame was not the real Natasha Romanov, but instead this Yelena imposter. And that could be the one who died. And our real Natasha could still be alive, ready to come back for future MCU films. Maybe with ScarJo's face, or maybe with Florence Pugh's face, whichever actress is more affordable. And this Ross in connection could also pave the way for where I think his character's headed, Red Hulk. In the World War Hulk's comic storyline, AIM is the agency partially behind Ross's transformation. If the MCU is bringing AIM back, Ross as Red Hulk seems like a very interesting goal. I've given you a lot to think about, so let's move on to the next section. How many others are there? Enough. We have to go back to where it all started. So they never do that to anyone again. Natasha and Yelena flee the other Red Room agents, and then this rural home that the family appears in later is now swarmed by Taskmaster's aircrafts. Now, these things are all over the poster for the movie. So I'm thinking they might play a big role in the story. Perhaps there's some plot to deploy these mind-controlled agents via this fleet to locations all over the world in a coordinated mass assassination. Natasha appears in a room looking through hollow projected screens that seem to show maps. Like that looks like Southeast Asia on the left. Maybe Perhaps she's uncovering this plot. Moving on. We're a family. We fight with you. You won't win. I've always found it best. Don't look into the past. In this section, Red Guardian faces Taskmaster, who does the Black Panther claw move, followed by a Spider-Man style kick and backflip. But mostly I'm interested in how Taskmaster got the vibranium for these claws. Perhaps he got it from Claw's stolen stash. Or notice this shot of the Red Room agents. The one on the left has some interesting scar tissue on her cheeks. I'm not sure what caused this, but maybe it's tribal scarring, like the kind we saw from some of the tribes of Wakanda in Black Panther. If you look closely at these female assassins, there is a lot of ethnic diversity. It's almost as if there's one for every major country. Perhaps the Red Room has a sleeper cell assassin for every one of their targets, including Wakanda, ready to drop in and take out the leader of that country as part of this coordinated assassination. And this Wakandan spy could be how Taskmaster got access to that vibranium. On to the next clip. Okay, you got a plan or shall I just stay duck and cover? My plan was to drive us away. Where your plan sucks. At some point, we all have to choose. Okay, Natasha and Yelena flee through the streets of Budapest from Taskmaster's tank vehicle and explosive arrows, and then Natasha fights off several Black Widow agents in this fancy room. Now, we have seen this in other promo footage. I think it's a main command center for the Red Room. There's a painting on the reverse wall showing Rasputin, the infamous mystic healer and advisor to the final Russian royal family of Emperor Tsar Nicholas II before the revolution. Now, the quick cuts and chaotic camera movement make it hard to tell, but this room is streaked with red light. Perhaps it's the projection of these world maps as the screens are shattering could create a really cool lighting effect where the targeted countries that are at stake are projecting on these characters as they fight. Moving on. Between what the world wants you to be and who you are. I made my choice. Okay, here there's some great action, but the big takeaway is this shot of Ross. Where is this? And more importantly, when is this? He's using a cane, so this could be around the time Ross said he suffered his heart attack, which would have been around 2011. Five years ago, I had a heart attack. I dropped right in the middle of my backswing. It turned out it was the best round of my life because after 13 hours of surgery and a triple bypass, I found something. 40 years in the army it never taught me perspective. But 2011 was not long after we saw Ross in The Incredible Hulk, when his hair and mustache were gray, and here he looks noticeably de-aged. Fewer wrinkles, blonder hair, like what William Hurt looked like in the late 90s. So why does a younger Ross need a cane? Maybe it's just an old army injury, and all of his scenes are flashbacks. But if Natasha Romanoff would be in those scenes, Scarlett Johansson was a teenager in the late 90s. Well, maybe that surgery in perspective that Ross mentioned was actually a medical procedure that gave him a transfusion of gamma irradiated blood from his AIM buddies, causing his physical appearance to fluctuate. One moment, he's got a youthful complexion and haircut. The other, he's got an occasional limp. The next, he's hulking out cherry flavor. Whoa. Moving on. I'm done running. Ah! 
here, Red Guardian improves his own shield mastery. He kick flips it just like Taskmaster did and Cap before him. And then he frisbees it past Melina out the cockpit window to clobber this dude. And by the looks of it, knock him into the jet engine. This appears to be part of the big climax of the film. So what's really going on here? Well, there's a shot of Yelena piloting a craft and behind her in the far background appears to be some giant structure. It's being built with cranes. All of the trailer footage has been very careful to hide whatever this is, except of course some shots of it collapsing and falling apart, leading to the epic skydive fight between Natasha and Taskmaster. The piece of debris that they slide against looks like it's made of these high-tech cells, maybe like a solar panel, or maybe one of the reflective panels that lie in a helicarrier and allow it to have that cloaking effect. So could this construction be an attempt by Ross to build his own fleet of helicarriers? Kind of like his own Project Insight that he's trying to build on foreign soil without Nick Fury knowing? Or could this all be the early stages of a peak space station under S.W.O.R.D.? It's kind of like all these trailers have been coming out with a camera pointed away from a giant Death Star being built behind us. Let me know what you think this is as we move on to the final Final clip. Here's what's gonna happen. Natasha, don't slouch. I'm not slouching. You're going to get the back hunch. Mm, listen to your mother. Oh my god, this up, up, is all right, enough. All of you. You didn't say anything. That's not fair. Oh, it looks like all this family needs to do is read from a certain tea towel. And Natasha, the recipe for happiness does not have slouching as an ingredient. Go to your room, young lady. Who do you think Taskmaster is? Why would Natasha and Yelena swap faces? And what the hell is that structure? Comment down below. And for more of our Marvel theories and speculation, be sure to join our official Discord server where we chew on all this stuff with our inner circle of supporters. Access our Discord by becoming a patron of New Rockstars today at patreon.com slash new rockstars. Follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe. Subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of everything Marvel. Thanks for watching. Bye.